and the Ouija wine guys uh, here with Jochem Dreissacker. Thank you for having us. The pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are now in this blending room. What do you? What is the purpose of this room? <laughs> the blending room, you know, um, for me is a wine, is a, is a big picture, and uh, out of a lot of different smaller, smaller parts. Yeah. And so, um, for me, our estate reasoning or the Silvana here, it's not only one big tank or one big barrel. It's uh, more than 20, 30 different uh, barrels, tanks. And here we make the, the finished blending. So uh, we have here sometimes a take the Riesling, a Riesling with a little bit more fruit, the yep. next a little bit more spiciness, the next a little bit more acid or flavors. And uh, we taste, or oh, I put all the wines here in a, in, a, in, a, in, in a line, and then we taste wine by wine, and later we make the blend. So 20% from this, 10% from this, 50% from this, or the, bar uh, or the barrels together, and we, uh, yeah, we'll see what's going on. So yep. over this way, you can become a little bit more deepness, more intense, and more flavors in the wine. So my you're basically mixing the different plots that you have. In Correct. The it's, we talk over one variety. You know? yeah. We talk over a blend of Silvana or a blend of Riesling. Not we don't mix the grapes, yeah. but we like to. Uh, we have so much different climb zones and soil types, and we uh, every soil type have a different, different character, and we like to bring this character in the wine. Yeah. Which here we have the Silvana, the Riesling, the uh, Pinot Noir, or Spet Pinot Noir, and the Rosé. Which one is the hardest one to blend? The hardest one, yeah. um, I think the, it's normally the Riesling. Uh, Riesling is a great variety, it's so sensible, and then you have so much different flavors, and uh, it's every time the same great variety, but the character of the wine yeah. is very often totally different. And then to find the perfect mixture, but at the end, you know, I'm a Riesling guy, yeah. and so uh, it's definitely for me, um, it must be the best of the best. Yeah. And so we are very straight and very, uh, yeah, it's every time heavy tastings, but at the end we have a perfect go and everything's good. Yeah, uh, we should taste the Riesling. How many different Rieslings do you have? Uh, we have more than, uh, I think, eight different Rieslings yeah. year by year, but um, thank you. <laughs> I'm feeling at home here. Yeah, I'm blue. <laughs> I feel like I'm, it's perfect. Um, this is um, our entry level, it's the organic yeah. racing, it's, uh, it's the same as the business card, the wine room. Um, for me, it's every time, uh, or for all of us here as winemakers, the entry level is the business card. Yeah. And uh, here you can feel the, the, the idea of the winery. This is a Riesling who comes from all over the area here, from cooler sites, from warmer sites. And we like it, we have here in Riesling for perfect drinking day by day, with, uh, it's good for food yeah. or, or, or just by so little drink, absolutely. Yeah. It's organic, is that important? For me, yes. Yeah. So when I started um, my wine career or business here in the winery, yeah. from the beginning up I like to work on an organic way. Every time when I um, tasted wines, um, I feel like that the organic ones are much more deeper, much more mineral full, more intense. And when you think about soils and uh, uh, nature outside, yeah. I think with in good soil and a lot of liveness, you have much more liveness in your wines, and you have much more liveness in the in the wines layer. Mm. Every juice tastes much more. And that from the beginning up, we uh, we changed. Uh, my parents worked conventional, uh, and I changed the farming directly in the first year to uh, with my brother together to organic farming. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's it's a big step, but at the end. For us as a family wine estate, it's the most sensible uh, way to produce wines. But this is kind of floral, but still a dry Riesling. Yes. Is that important for you or is it important for the yeah, area? We, here, in, we, we stay here in, in Bechtang, it's one of the warmest uh, um, uh, parts of the South Foreign Hessen. Yeah. And we have the luck here, we have a lot of limestone soils. Yeah. And these limestone soils give the wines, uh, the Rieslings especially, a little bit more smoothness. Yeah. And then you have on one side, you have the minerality and texture, and then you have this uh, uh, smoothness from the, uh, from, the, from the limestone. And then I think we don't need the sugar to show complexity. Um, for me, it's much more important that we have the concentration over the ripeness and low yields, high concentration, and then you have a full body and juicy wine with a good richness and yeah, good minerality structure. And you don't need sugar. No. Sometimes sugar shows you something, uh, it tastes yummy on one side, yeah. but when you eat something to this wine, it's very often too sweet. Yeah. 
And for me, uh, I like to have the uh, text very bone dry. Mm. So I like to have them dry, and so it's a perf food wise perfect combination and taste was for me too. And yeah. But do you think that the Riesling wines are going more to dry than sweet? Is that the trend? I think, or you, is have, trend? I think you have. I think you have. Um, when you have a Riesling from the Mosel area, yeah. the Mosel have uh, the slate and they have much more cooler climate. And then it's there when you have there and, and Riesling with 10 or 15 grams of sugar. Yeah. I think it's totally different taste than when you have here in Rhein Hessen 10 or 15 grams of, of sugar. Yeah. Um, I love sometimes to drink a cabinet, but I never like to drink a cabinet from Rhein Hessen. Yeah. So I drink a cabinet from the Mosel or the, or the Savoy. Yeah. But uh, and for a dry style of Riesling, I like to have it really dry, but you need every time a, a, a harmony in the wine. Yeah? You can have a harmony with, uh, with an, a 0 0.5 gram of sugar or Sure, with, with five or six grams of sugar, but at the end, for me, I think personally, um, I like to have a little bit dry. Yeah, but you also might uh, like uh, make the red ones. Yes. Um, the Spätburgunder, or like the rest of the world, they call it the Pinot Noir. <laughs> we call it Spätburgunder. Yeah. Um, Spätburgunder is when you would. Outside of Germany, talk of the German wines. I think you don't talk of a German Grauburgunder. No. Um, it's a very great, uh, famous grape variety at the moment here in, in Germany. But we talk of a Riesling and we talk of a Pinot Noir. Yeah. And um, I learned very fast that it makes no sense to produce Pinot Noir in, in much more different uh, uh, quality, qualities. We produce only one mm -hmm. Pinot Noir. We uh, um, some years ago we selected our our, to, uh, our Pinot Noir vineyards and say, okay, one, uh, one side the little cooler ones, and on the other side the, the riper and older ones. Yeah. And the, the cooler parts, we take them for the for a very fine, clear, and um, yeah, spicy um, rosé, yeah. lighter style, uh, fresh and mineral full, and, uh, and the, the older wines and are from the warmer parts. In the, especially in the Geiersberg, our most important uh, single side here, we take them for uh, the Pinot Noir Red Wine. Should, should we taste it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a very small. It's a very small production. So we produce from this wine only between, yeah, I think ten to fifteen barrels, barrels yeah. every year. But um, you know, we have a very yeah. I think it's a very, very uh, fine grape variety, but Pinot Noir as well need the concentration. And we work here with yield quantities from around um, 25 hectoliters. This is a, the um, farm comes from vintage 2013 and 2014. Yeah. Um, and you can feel this classical Pinot Noir texture and nose to have the coolness on one side and then the power and the structure on the other side. Yeah. Who are you competing with, you think? Uh, with your Pinot Noir, is it the French or is it the American or is the... Yeah. Um, for me, um, I love to drink Burgundian wines and uh, for me, it's for the Pinot Noirs, uh, it's the Burgund is the benchmark. Mm -hmm. And um, sure, our style here... Um, we <laughs> Thank you. <Just> tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. Um, no, um, uh, it's a little bit influenced in French style, yep. but it's Rhein Hessen yep. at the end. Love the smell. How many bottles a year do you produce? Between three, three and five thousand max. Yeah, that's the total uh, production of Pinot Noir year by year. And we store them minimum two years in uh, in in our cellar. Yeah. Normally three years at the moment. Uh, in hundred percent Barrique. Yeah. Um, 80% new ones, so we let uh, them ripe a little bit longer in the barrels, so we give them a little bit more. Um, yeah, texture over the uh, over the uh, over the oak, and then it's unfiltered. Very easy. <laughs> it was really, really good. But you said that you used the older Pinot Noir to the rosé. The younger ones and the cooler parts. The cooler parts. Yeah, correct. Yeah. The younger and the cooler parts. You know, you see very often rosés that are very dark, and uh, when you taste them, they are very a little bit more on a very intense fruit and a lot of flavors and sometimes a little bit more, a, a little bit thicker rosé, you know, and I like to have them light and straight and uh, uh, I will not say Provence style, but yeah. sure influence. Yeah, yeah, the color is, is Correct. Provence. Yeah, the color is Pinot Noir, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it's 100% it's, it's Pinot Noir and we, we work uh, with the grapes the same as in white wine. Yeah. So we, we harvest the, the, the Pinot Noir grapes 
we uh, in, in small boxes, we crush them a little bit by feet, then we press them very carefully yeah. and uh, ferment them dry uh, directly. So we make no maceration on skin, so we have not the color. And at the end, for the for the for the wine style, yeah. it's so crisp, mineralful, and, and straight that you, especially in the summertime, mm. when you sit down outside, it's warm. And you have this glass, and you can drink very easily bottled. <laughs> mm. But how long does the uh, skin go together with the? No skin. So we crush it by feet. Yeah. So, so you get a little bit of the color yeah, for that. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Only for I think it's important to crush them a little bit. Yeah. And then we press them directly with a low pressure ah. for a little bit longer time. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So this has been feet pressed. We, we do we take the feed for uh, the most of our grapes yeah. so uh, nine percent of that what we harvest we harvest by hand yeah. and we learned over the years that uh, every machine you take to uh, to work with the grapes you you add a lot of uh, a lot of phenols yeah. and uh, you know we work here without any stuff so we don't work with enzymes we don't work with any wine material stuff you normally think as a winemaker that you need it for wine. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's only grape juice and a little bit sulfur at the end. Uh, naturally it's fermented. Yep. And when you work on this way, you must work very, very carefully. And yep. the feed, every time you don't add something, you know, the, the, the feed crush the grape, but nothing else. No. It's the, uh, extremely careful. Yep. And so that's the way that we, uh, we work. Cool. This is the old way of doing it. Yes. It? Yeah. Back to the roots. Back to the roots. Yeah. Absolutely. Really cool. Thank you so much. It's been uh, really interesting. And uh, do you think that uh, all the viewers should super subscribe to our channel? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. <laughs> See you. Cheers.